Good Monday to you. It's your boy G Bush. You know what it is. You got to have my Slurpee with me battling today. If you don't know, I was supposed to be on the UCSS today, but if you guys don't know, I thank you for all, you know, all your, your prayers and wishes and everything. If you don't know, I'm going to just say this again so you can spread this to the other people. Sometimes, right now, people don't know, I did play uh, college football at Ohio University. Um, I did play defensive end. And right now, I've had neck surgery and back surgery. I have two herniated or three herniated discs in my neck that cannot be operated on. So sometimes, unfortunately, I wake up and my arms don't work. And I have crazy pain down my sides and, and all that good stuff. So I don't say that. To, I, I don't mention it a lot. I don't get out there in front of it too much. But I think it's good that I say that because some people just worry about me. Like, I'm like, what's going on, G. Bush? What's up? How could you be here, but you weren't at UCSS this morning? That's because I got some uh, medical history, medical stuff, but I tough it out when I need to tough it out. And today we had some breaking news and I had to get back into the ultimate Browns at 30, the, the fastest 30 minutes in all of sports. You see it right here. Matter of fact, make sure you hit that like button right now. But city council fighting back. They fighting back. That's the story of the day. And that's why you clicked on the thumbnail. We'll get to that coming up here in a second. Um, We'll get some comments and thoughts on this. Are the Browns free agent moves mild sauce? You know, here in Cleveland, uh, we, we we like to like our moves. We like what we're doing. We, we appreciate what we're doing. We got rose-colored glasses in our moves. But on the, the 33rd team came out with a poll. I think this was uh, out. And we have a skit, a little uh, snippet from uh, Jason Lloyd and the, and the guys at UCSS. You know, they got us, they gave us a C-. minus. Is that warranted? We'll break that down coming up here in uh, in a little bit. Uh, and then we get to the, the move. We know that the Haslam's want to move the team, but do you think they have the right to move the team? I think a lot of people have skipped over that step, right? A lot of people weren't here in 95 when the, when the Browns moved. We know that they brought the team. We know that they purchased the team. You know what? But do they have a right to move it to wherever they are. We'll kind of dive in that and get your questions, get some of your answers and your thoughts on that. So be ready to opine on the on the, uh, on the chat. So we got to get the chat going. And of course, we start with City Council strikes back against Jimmy Haslam. Right, let me go ahead and play this clip really quickly so to catch you guys up on the thought process of why City Council believes that they have the right um, in order to uh, kind of take, uh, you know, some sort of legal, you know, take a vote to keep the Browns in the city of Cleveland. What this basically does, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is ensures that um, the Cleveland Browns uh, have to go through the legal process of leaving the city of Cleveland, whether they want to move the team to Timbuktu or whether they want to move them to Brook Park or to Lakewood or to any other state. Um, they have to uh, go before um, the city, Cleveland City Council, ask for permission to leave that team or to move the team, or they have to put the, give us six months notice and offer to put the team up for sale. We're hoping that the latter does not happen. However, this is going to ensure that, that the Cleveland Browns uh, are going to be a part of the legislative process and the Cleveland City Council is going to have a say so in that. I think we should have already been involved. I think we should be part of the process as of right now. Those we're not, we're not privy to anything. These are the Cleveland Browns, and, and I stand by the Cleveland Browns. So for the people of the city of Cleveland, a lot of people who are involved in the negotiations right now um, were either too young or weren't even involved or, or remember when the Browns left the first time. And the heart felt that um, this city went through when that team left. And we want to assure that the, the, the Cleveland Browns remain the Cleveland Browns and that this is a Cleveland team. It's not a another city team. Um, so that's that's me where I stand with it. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and get back to this. Did you hear what he said right there? The people that's involved in the negotiations was either too young or weren't even born to understand when the Cleveland Browns was taken the first time. Let me take a sip on that. <laughs> He, he wasn't playing no games. He's not playing no games. City council is fighting back on this situation. Let me go read you a little bit, little bit of an article here. City council is fighting back on it. Let me pull this up. Last week, Jimmy Haslam confirmed that he was interested in earmarking the Brook Park site for a potential stadium build. One with a dome, a new RTA stop, a potential mixed-use village, 
and an ocean of privately owned parking. City, uh, City Hall, save for a few public comments, have remained po um, um, politically quiet um, on the matter. And uh, until Casey's, uh, which is the uh, gentleman you heard from, City Council of Cleveland, I believe it's the 16th Ward, I believe, announced on Monday, Mayor Bibb did not give a matter of single mention in the state of city address last Thursday, but afterwards said that he hoped he would uh, keep the team in Cleveland. The Haslam's have yet to respond on, uh, on how they, if the legislation legislation is passed by city council, will respond. Casey speaking on behalf of the six other council members in the room, compared to political and uh, uh, an involvement in sports matters to then Ohio uh, Attorney General Mike DeWine's legislation in 2018 to keep the Columbus crew for playing at historic crew stadium. Uh, there are, uh, these are the Cleveland Browns case. He said, we want to assure that Cleveland Browns remain in the Cleveland Browns. Um, and, uh, and that is the legal team is not, uh, is not other, uh, cities teams. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not calling out uh, the Hazems to sell the team. He, he added, we're just uh, calling for the uh, process of the state law to be, uh, to be followed. The ordinance will be Casey said, introduced formally in uh, council member, uh, chamber Monday evening, then head to finance diversity, uh, equity and inclusion committee within the next couple of weeks. So, you know, what he's saying is, look, man, uh, the Cleveland Browns are the Cleveland Browns. I'm taking it like this. The Cleveland Browns are the Cleveland Browns. And at the same time, we want to keep them the Cleveland Browns. We're not trying to have those guys go uh, a bunch of other places. We want these guys to be in the city of Cleveland. And one of the things that I've always thought was this seemed like too much of a foregone conclusion. Everybody was getting behind it and said, oh, yeah, Brook Park is fine and blah, blah, blah. Nobody did no, no, no feasibility studies. Nobody did any financial forecasting on what it would do to the city of Cleveland if they did take the stadium away. No one talked about the unintended consequences of business. I look at it like this. In the city of Cleveland, there was almost a million people back almost 30, 40, 50 years ago, right? Every single year, you start to see people move and move and move and move out. The tax base begins to go and move out. And then what do you have? Right now, you're looking at, what, 350,000, if that, in Cleveland? If that in, in this in the, in the great city of Cleveland, so the Browns, I trust me, I work down there every single week. I do Browns tailgate shows live from West Six. Every single bar in West Six is jumping. Every single establishment is jumping. Parking lots are filled. Muni lots. They're charging crazy months for uh, 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 bags of money for the muni lot. People don't even think about it. You say the muni lot, the municipal lot is owned by the city of Cleveland. Do you understand the amount of money you lose if there is no muni lot? Notice in this kit, in, in, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, comment, notice in, in, the, in the press release, multiple privately owned parking lots. It was way too quick. It was way too close. People was doing victory laps on this. And let me tell you, these politicians... Listen, they're not going to let you roll up out of here scot-free. Not so fast, Mr. Haslam. <laughs> we, you, think we, you think we haven't seen this in, in before? And the thing that I, I, when you take a look at, if you look at the Cleveland Scene magazine, they talk about in this article, they say they invoke the Art Model law to keep the Haslams in Cleveland. I mean, is there really a big difference if the Browns move to Baltimore or Brook Park? It ain't that much of a difference if, if and only if, you're not splitting revenue. Where's that revenue going? We ain't talked about a revenue split, a revenue share, nothing. He said they're under contract to 2028. Y'all going to live here and play here too. <laughs> this is very interesting. Very interesting chat. Um. Uh, Demon X four by D or Demon four by four says doesn't sound like anything actually changed in the city conference. Am I wrong? Uh, Bill Squirrel says, "Oh yeah, he's staying no business." I think what what you're seeing the difference is what you're seeing. Uh, Demon four by four is you said what is what's the change? The change is they're they're putting up legislation that makes it impossible for, for the Browns to move. Uh, or if you do want to move, let us know so that we can get, get you ready to sell the team. 
That sounds like one of the coldest ultimatums I've seen in a very long time. And here's the thing. They have the right. They, they got the, if they get enough votes to do it, you think they ain't moving on it? Because you got to think about it. If you're a city councilman in the inner city Cleveland, what would you get? How are you getting reelected? How are you going to go to your constituents and say, we let the biggest cash cow walk? You print money for the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns could go one in 31 and then you mean Eli is still packed. That just goes to show you how much pool the Browns got. Craig uh, Werlow says, I'm a huge Steelers fan, but I felt really bad when they went to Baltimore. Cleveland was done dirty. I agree with that. Ken Adams says, city doesn't want to pay for uh, a new stadium, but they want money, uh, the money the team generates. Hold on, though. Let's be clear. They built that stadium themselves, right? The first one. You got to think about this also, Ken. Haslam's just went out and spent 200, 300 possible million dollars on, on, on being the uh, minority owner of the Milwaukee Bucks. Let's be clear. It's kind of hard to go to your home city and be like, let me get a billion. Let me get this taxpayer bread and, and let's get it going. And you already know what our tax base looks like right now. But you just now spent 300 million on the Milwaukee Bucks out of town? Not even in the city? No, nah, we, we. I don't know if we can do that. I don't know if we would do that. Hey, uh, after that uh, little speech, I really do hope the Browns move to Park now. <laughs> how are you? How are you going to make a business stay? Is this is this Russia? No, hold on. Like here's the here's the crazy part about this. When you think about legislation, they have legislation that says the Cleveland Browns will never play in another place other than Cleveland. That is the Art Modell law. When they came back in, in 95, when they left and they got the team back, they got legislation said that Browns will never leave here again. Now, they took it kind of literal. He was like, Brook Park, that ain't Cleveland. Man, we got a barn burner, 236 people in this joint. I need your opinion. Coming up next, do the Haslam's have the right to move the team? One man on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, Jason Lloyd, says, nah, 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 I go where I want to. This is America. We'll come back and check it out. You're listening to the hottest thing smoking on the internet, the Ultimate Browns Show, right here on the UCSS Network. Ah, yes, indeed. Every single Monday, uh, we, we got Adam the Bull. You know, we 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 got Mizell. We ready to go. I call him my I call him Mizell when I feeling real saucy. He he has he feels like he part of the African American kid. Mizell Zach Mizell. <laughs> Every Monday, don't know what it's gonna be, but make sure you check it out. The Guardians three and well, I believe they're three and one. I believe they're three and one going into uh coming into the second set against the uh second series of the year against the Mariners. You don't want to miss it. Some of the best baseball talk in all the world. Make sure you check it out. It is the ultimate guardians every single Monday, right here on the UCSS network. Yeah, y'all moving. G. Bush is moving here, 249 people ready to go. Let's get right back off into this thing. We're talking about the Guardians, she's not the Guardians, but the, the Cleveland Browns moving around. Cleveland Browns move. Um, it looks like the Haslam's want to make it imminent. It looks like the Haslam's would like to, like to have that thing in Brook Park, but we've just played some audio from the councilman, city councilman, that says they want to they have legislation and go over it in the city council to prohibit the Browns from going to Brook Park and keeping them in the inner city of Cleveland. So we talk about this all the time. We say, listen, is can, do you have the right to stop someone? Just somebody in the chat said, what is this, Russia? You'll stop somebody's business from moving. They can move to wherever they want. I think when you take a look at this clip from Jason Lloyd, it looks like Jason Lloyd is of the same mindset. Part of it. Here's, the, here's what's going to determine it. I tweeted this at when they were at the owners meetings talking about this. If they can get the funding, it comes down to if they can get something on the ballot and they're going to have to get funding. If they can get the funding, it doesn't matter what Cleveland tells you at 1 o'clock today, at 1 o'clock tomorrow, at 1 o'clock. It doesn't matter. They are leaving. If they can get the funding, they are going to Brook Park. But I don't know that they can get something passed on the ballot. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what it comes and, down to. And it has nothing to do. But that's a huge ask. It is a huge ask. And if there's a way that they can do this without getting it on the ballot, it is a million percent happening. 
Mm. <laughs> As you can see, all the pledges trees are gone. All that little, oh, well, we don't know if they're trying to do it. We don't know if they're really trying to get the money to do it. Who knows? Maybe a couple years down. It looks like all of a sudden the Haslam's is like, no, 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 this is what we're doing. This is this is what we're doing. And you take a look at when you when you juxtapose it, and and, and I'll, I'll I'll read I'll read I'll read it um from what the city council said. Let me give you an opportunity to do that. Let me just get that on right back. Because somebody might have been coming in here. Let's see what we got. Um, here we go. This is what it says, Cleveland Scene Magazine. These are the Cleveland Browns. City Councilman proposed this legislation holding the Browns to move art to move uh, to the Art Model Law amid stadium negotiations. City Councilman leaping in a tug of war surrounding negotiations over the possible renovations of the Brown Stadium and potential move to Brook Park proposed legislation on Monday to ensure that the team follows a law dating back to 1996, the Art Model Law. If it intends to move the Cleveland Browns, Ward 16 Councilman Brian Casey explains his reasoning uh, to his press conference this afternoon. The state law, Casey Reed read aloud, state uh, in the uh, council chamber, was clearly pinpointed to Cleveland's dire bid as it is dealt with two decades ago of moving the city or moving the team to Baltimore to convince the billionaire owners, D and Jimmy, Jimmy Haslam, to keep their football team playing home games on the city's lakefront. No owner of a professional team that uses tax-supported facility for most of its home games and receives financial assistance for the state or a political subdivision thereof, the ordinance reads, shall cease playing most of its home games at the facility and begin playing in home games elsewhere. <laughs> See, that, you know, this is unless the Haslam's enter one of two legal routes. One, Make a new deal with a new city, uh, Casey said. Whether they move to uh, whether they move the uh, the team to Timbuktu or Brook Park or Lakewood or to any other state, so they're contending moving the Cleveland Browns down the street is still a move. They're contending if you want to move from here over anywhere outside the city limits, Avon Lake, Saskatchewan. Toronto, Birmingham, or Brook Park, they are considering that a move of the Cleveland Browns. Now, that's a funny interpretation. I never thought about it was coming down to this, but this is a very interesting conversation. Let's get your comments on it. Do they have the right to move? Uh, if they move to Brook Park, Beast Grill says if they move to Brook Park, it's going to be a lot of people coming in town. It, um, it's diehards, Browns fans that live out of town and keep up the Browns. The airport will be crazy busy. Uh, let's see. Craig Werlow says, I can't imagine how millions, uh, how many millions Oakland's has lost in revenue because of losing their basketball, football, and losing their baseball team. G. Bush, you always speak the truth. Never change. God bless. I'm going to tell you what. Whew. Uh, Wayne Willis says, I hope the Haslam's move the Browns to Mid Park, regardless of how close uh, it may be to Hopkins International. Uh, let's see. Pretty sure that that old legislation that they are trying to reinforce is only applicable during the lease agreement, which would end uh, about the same time the new stadium will be up and running. I believe it's up to two, 2028. 2028. Smitty says, why is this even, why is, or no, no, you said, not, not you. Boom, boom says, why is he this even a bait? Let D, uh, D and Jimmy has him spend his money. Poor cities sh shouldn't be held hostage and forced to give billions for a stadium that is only used a few times a year. See, I think it's a conundrum here because I, I think, you know, the city wants to keep it in the city limits of Cleveland, right? But at the same time, y'all not looking to give up that bag, though. You see what I'm saying? They want to keep it, but you ain't willing to put a certain amount of money in there. Listen, this thing is getting real political because you're between a rock and a hard place. Uh, we are so divided politically in the state of Ohio uh, between blue inner cities and rural 
red red parts of the, of the of the state, and so you have to fulfill your constituents' responsibilities as being from a certain area to be reelected. But if you have uh, uh, aspirations of being something else, you also have to remember the political calculus of what you're doing right now. Because if you want to be governor, they're gonna run them ads. Mayor Bibb spent millions of dollars on it, right? You know the ads is coming. You know it's done. Um, and last but not least, Smitty says city needs to develop the lakefront. You see, that's the thing, Smitty. See, they're playing a nice, they're playing a real nice game right here. Because what they're telling you is, yeah, we're going to use this to develop the lakefront. We got the crown jewel. We got the Browns. We got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We just need some time. They've been saying they need to redevelop that lakefront in how long? 40 years? 50 years? See, that's the thing with people around. With, with, the state of Ohio was slow. We slow to everything. We slow to the party. They don't plan on doing nothing now with the lakefront. If they did, they would already be moving on it. So be ready for the backup contingency plan when the Browns do move. The contingency plan they're going to tell y'all is, look, we always was going to do the uh, lakefront, so don't even worry about it. We That money we was going to get the Browns, we about to put that in the lakefront. Psych, because you're going to run into all the red tape. You're not them, The billionaires not letting you get rid of that, 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 that airport. They're not letting you – they're not letting you – do you think they're going to let you bulldoze that? We'll be in red tape for 25 years. Go look up the big dig in Boston. Go check out the big dig and how long it took in the big dig. Big dig took 50, 54, 50, 60, 70 years to get done because the polit the politics is, is near and dear. <laughs> by gee, is this really an issue? By the time the plans are placed, the stadium is up and ready for a game. It would be 2028 20, anyway. Hey. That's why when Deshaun Watson, people was like, I can't believe Deshaun Watson said he wanted a dome. I said, well, Deshaun Watson might be gone by the time the dome get even took up. <laughs> he might be out of here by the time that even touched down. Keep, bring, keep them comments coming. 346 people here. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe for, button for your boy. Continue the conversations in, in, in the comment section as always. And uh, let's get to it uh, when we come back. Are the Browns free agent moves mild sauce? Why is everybody down on these moves? We'll come back and examine that when we get back. It's G. Bush here on the Ultimate uh, Browns Show here on the UCSS Network. You know what it is. Every single Tuesday, we got the Ultimate Cavaliers. If you're mad and upset and you feel so, so just robbed by the way the Cavs is playing right now, they got blown out last yesterday, last night. Blown out last night against the uh, against the Nuggets by 100. If you want to know what's going on and you want to figure out how do you get better, how do the Cavs get out of this funk, you got to listen to uh, Ultimate Cavaliers. Every single Tuesday, him and Jason, my boy McNuggets, Jason Lloyd, uh, they break down the Cavaliers to see what they do. Uh, and hopefully they can get back on track. You can take a look at them every single Tuesday right here on the UCSS Network. You already know what it is. Stop playing when we talk about that. We got to get to this every Thursday. Ultimate 216, my man Earl DePearl, talking uh, sports, culture, and everything 216. Check him out every single Thursday on the UCSS Network. All right. So, you know, everybody seems to be a little upset about the Cleveland Browns. Seems to be they 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 putting a lot of... A lot of salt on the Cleveland Browns moves. Really call it a mid sauce. Uh, the 33rd team uh, came out with a uh, publication that had the Browns at a C minus for their free agent moves. I'm like, good gracious, C minus. Y'all always doing it. Check out uh, and, and see what uh, Adam the Bull, Jason Lloyd, and Tyvis Powell had to say about it. I mean, I, I think the Browns had a better offseason than a C minus. What do you think, Jason? I think they probably got dinged for the Judy extension. Yeah, but that's just money. That's not. Well, it still counts. I don't know. As, yeah, I guess the Judy. I guess trade and extension. Although they gave up nothing for him. I don't know. Yeah. I I certainly would give him a C minus. I think I gave him a B or somewhere. I think, in the I, think B I gave range. him a B or B minus. I think that's too low, Tyvis. Yeah, the C minus is kind of it's a little absurd because the thing is, there everybody's mad at they didn't make a ton of moves. They resigned some guys that they wanted to resign. 
But when you look around the roster, they didn't really need to. Outside of the wide receiver position, there was nothing a really glaring need that you needed. So all your guys is coming back going to be healthy, your key guys. So I don't understand. I mean, you could argue if I'm trying to, you know, play the other side of this. Yeah. I got you, the explanation, by the way. There actually was an article. Do you want to hear oh. the explanation? Well, let me just, okay, I was going to say you could argue they could have, instead of just bringing back mostly the same guys on the D-line, that they could have, you know, gone after somebody better. But, but go ahead, Mike, yeah. Uh, this is from Dan, and there actually wasn't, the tweet did not include the link, but they did write an article. The Cleveland Browns' biggest, and this is from the article. I'm reading this off my phone. Okay. The Cleveland Browns' biggest swing was acquiring Jerry Judy on the fifth-year option for two late-round picks. This could be a low-risk trial period to see if Judy could develop as a number two receiver next to Amari Cooper. However, Cleveland then signed him to a three-year extension, though the exact details remain Told unclear. You. To avoid quarterback crisis from last season, Jameis Winston and Tyler Huntley were brought in on cheap deals to serve as their second and third quarterbacks on the roster. Bringing back Zedaria Smith might have been the biggest win of the offseason. Defensive depth was also added in Jordan Hicks and Quentin Jefferson. But here's what's still needed. Few of these moves matter if the quarterback play is not good, which is the Browns' reality right now. To a lesser extent, they did something similar with the Judy contract to ensure that at least one receiver was locked into the roster for 2025. But Judy is disappointed during his career, and Cleveland has already priced in, in, priced in the improvement the team hopes to see from the former first-round pick. And, and we, we got to go to this. We just got to go to it, and, and let's get to it. My man, Xavier P., the real Xavier P., says, man, every move is graded based on Watson. At what point do you just stop taking shots at Watson? Offseason moves, grading the moves have nothing to do with Watson. This is so aggregate, aggravating. And this, this, is, this is how we end on this situation because, I'm, I'm, you know, we, we up against time, and it always seems like when you're just having a good time, stuff you end up just moving around and messing you up. The problem is this, man. If you're going to be grading on off-season moves, stop being a hack. Don't be a hack and write every single thing you say has a disclaimer about Deshaun Watson. I asked you about uh, uh, what the off-season moves was. Did I ask you about the price of tea in China? Did I ask you how much is gas in, in, in Colorado? We asked you about a specific thing. But every single word, every single thing you say about the Cleveland Browns, you could be talking about Nick Chubb and what his prognosis is for 2024. And, well, none of it matters. It all comes down to Deshaun Watson. Shut up. This is, I mean, come on. At the, what point? You gave him a C minus, not based on whether you think Jerry Judy can play or not. You gave him a C minus, not whether or not you thought Zadarius Smith's effort or his production matched up to what he was doing last year. You, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't do any of that. You didn't, you didn't come back and say, well, you know what? How do I like? How do how do I like the moves that they made? It's all about what Deshaun Watson is or is not, or the question mark. And so, you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people and a lot of publications that write a lot of different stuff. And it's just nerve wracking at some point. And you know, what? Steve Smith had a point. Steve Smith had an actual point when he was on the, on the show the other couple of weeks ago talking about, you know, people in Cleveland need to get, get their job together. In general, I think people in the media need to get their job together. Because sometimes it's, it's painfully obvious, like the people's not watching tape, people ain't watching film, people don't know who's on the roster, people don't know what's going on with nothing. They just keep coming back and saying, it's all about Deshaun Watson. And if that's the only thing you have to break down for the Cleveland Browns, <clears throat> that ain't good enough. With that being said, it's your boy G. Bush. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It's the only way you can catch up to the ultimate Brown show. Make sure you tweet. Make sure you uh, retweet. Make sure you like when you do all that good stuff with the ultimate Browns. So with that being said, you never know where your boy G Bush might show up. You know what? He may not be here tomorrow, but he might be here in the afternoon. Always listen for the Clippers. Go Browns. Have a good, good evening. 